Hi all! Today we are looking at regularization and how to evaluate your multivariate models. We are going to be looking at some of the metrics involved. This includes bias and variance, or overfitting and underfitting, as well as a solution. We will also look at regularization and evaluation metrics of linear regression. Usually when performing machine learning on real data sets, we do not train on one data set and use it to make further predictions. Instead, we segment the data set, randomly proportioned by some percentage, into a training set, validation set, and test set. The most commonly used split is 60, 20, and 20. The training set is used to train the model and find the weights based on that data exclusively. The validation set is used to find optimum values of hyperparameters, such as the learning rate for gradient descent or the degree of polynomial. Once the model is chosen, it will be tested on the test set using fresh data. This is important. If the model was trained on the test data set, the idea of a test set becomes redundant. The test set is responsible for diagnosing models that make too much error or too little error due to overfitting. The validation set can be used here as well, provided it is not used to optimize any parameters. There are different metrics involved when evaluating machine learning models. Underfitting or high bias is when we have high error, because the model formulated does not fit the data well. For example, if we had a data set with clear quadratic relationship, but predicted a re linear relationship, this is underfitting. In underfitting, the hypothesis is usually less complex than the actual data set. If we had predicted a cubic function, the most optimal weight for the variable x cubed would be zero enabling the machine learning algorithm to reduce the cubic to the more optimum quadratic. Overfitting, or high variance, is the opposite of underfitting. Overfitting is when we have a model that is too complex for our data set. Even though it predicts with extremely low error and high accuracy, it does so at the cost of trying to look for an actual trend, and hence future predictions outside the data set will be poor. The test set will help prevent overfitting. It is much more difficult to diagnose than underfitting because it is not always apparent without proper testing that the issue exists. The bullseye figure shows the difference between variance and bias. These issues can all be circumvented with proper use of a training and test data set. Though high variance does not seem bad, it can threaten the integrity of a machine learning model. Though it has low error, it has high error on future predictions where the data has not been seen. This is also why it has high error on test sets. The first diagram shows underfitting, where the data could be postulated as like a quadratic, but we predict a linear, so we underfit. The second diagram shows how well the quadratic model fits the data. The third diagram shows how we have overfitted the data. As you can see, we formulated an extremely complex function, perhaps polynomial of orders up to 7 or 8 or more. It is able to pass through almost all the points perfectly, as if it were connecting the dots. However, we do not want to do that. There is guaranteed to be noise and slight error and slight perturbations in positions in every data set. We do not want our machine learning algorithm to take into account all this noise and try to relentlessly minimize error. We need it to find the intrinsic trend. To address the trade-offs between bias and variance, we use regularization. Our current algorithm is focused on minimizing the cost function, and that's all. However, by placing complete and utter emphasis on error and not on model suitability, we are essentially encouraging overfitting. Regularization is a modification to the cost function, which enables the algorithm to make a trade-off between model complexity and model accuracy. A high value for regularization leads to a high bias, 
and a low value for regularization leads to a high variance. Essentially, the value of regularization is inversely proportional to our model complexity. The regularization hyperparameter we use is called lambda, and it penalizes all weights except the intercept. The intercept has no issues with overfitting. It always generalizes fine, which should be intuitive. As you can see, we've added a new term to the cost function. Lambda times the sum of each weight squared, starting from the weight for feature x1, ignoring the bias term. Now this is essentially penalizing the size of the weights. If w sub j is very large, w sub j square, squared will be even larger, and it will add to our cost function, increasing the error. This is based on the idea that larger weights create more complex models. Also, as the order of a polynomial model increases, especially for polynomials of high order, the number of terms and weights increases by hundreds, if not thousands, at an, an extremely quick rate. Thus, the number of weights in W and the size of these weights will be penalized heavily if too large, compensating for their overfitting ability and their deceptive high accuracy. When lambda is very high, the penalty added to the weights increases, and thence there is more focus on preventing overfitting. When lambda is very small, there is less focus on penalizing lambda. Lambda is another parameter we decide on during the validation stage with the validation set. To find the optimum value of lambda, we can plot the training cost function and validation cost function over different values of lambda. Accuracy or similar metric could be plotted as well. When lambda is low, the training cost function is very low and training accuracy is high. But the cross-validation cost function tends to be high as the model fits well only to the training set. The aim for the optimization is to minimize cross-validation cost function. As lambda is incremented in units, the training cost function begins to increase and becomes very high due to bias. During this procedure of lambda increments, the cross-validation error reaches a minimum and then increases as the system moves over to a high bias. The val value of lambda is the optimal value of lambda where cross-validation cost is minimum. This helps a model perform accurately with fresh data. A model can be evaluated by many metrics. We can use the test validation sets to see the model response and measure error. There are a few statistical metrics that can be used to scrutinize a model, for example, the R-squared metric. It measures how close the data points are to the regression fit. An R-squared metric of 1 implies that the model fits very well, and as it goes closer to 0, the performance worsens. Adjusted R-squared is another metric that builds up on the purpose of R-squared, but penalizes the system for features added. Models with tons of predictors tend to perform better in a sample than when tested out of sample. The adjusted R-squared penalizes you for adding the extra predictor variables that don't improve the existing model. It is less than R-squared for more than one predictor variable. And that concludes our video. This course was created as a part of the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative, the world's first massive online open coursework developed entirely by an online community. If you'd like to learn more about us or view more courses, visit crowdcourse.stanford.edu.